What's up, everybody? This is Funkmaster V, Vinny Vineyard. Uh, I'm just uh, checking in here and just wanted to do a little blurb to really put this out into the universe because um, I think it's important. Um, I've been, and I just kind of figured it's time to do it now. It's about a week, almost a week, since we returned from a two-week trek uh, across the United States and back. Now, this was a, um, well, a dream of mine has always been to drive the American West uh, through the desert. And that was something my wife, Julie, also shared that she wanted to do. And we had an opportunity with Brandon Bishop from Asai TV. He's making a movie, and he owns a television network, and he wants this movie to be an exclusive movie on his network, which is Asai TV, A-S-Y TV. You could be a smart ass and call it Assy TV, but I think that hurts his feelings. Um, but, you know, he wanted to cast me as the, as the lead in one of these. Uh, it's a road comedy. It's not a horror movie. It's, it's just a pure comedy and it's using a lot of the big and funky people and lore so if you are a fan of the hike if you're excited about camp smoky if you love wjhcam if you like wrestling with ghosts or any of our comedy uh, sketches or anything like that um this will be right up your alley because it's going to feature luke and travis and candy and kirby and the twins and uh we can start going down the list amber and everybody else there's going to be a lot of the big and funky people involved in this too and of course me, and and my character is a lot like the Vinny character from uh, WJHCAM, and uh, Luke's character is a lot like uh, Arlo from the same movie. So if you like the rapport that they had, then uh, just get get ready for more. Um, anyway, that movie was called Get to the Whiskey. He's changed the name of it to Vinny's Fantastic Rock and Roll Adventure, and that should be released here in a month or so, along with Camp Smokey, our third movie in the uh, Smoky Mountain Chronicles which we're gonna shoot, it's crazy, we're shooting, um, we're editing both movies now, and we're shooting uh, scenes for both tomorrow, so, you know, it's it's fun, it's, it's a crazy time right now. But getting back to the point about Route 66, um, it's taken me a week, I've been here, I've been working a little bit, I've been uh, communicating and editing and shooting new footage uh, for two movies, um, but really been taking it easy, and there's been a couple days I've been just wiped out, and uh, it's taken a lot to um, process what happened, what we achieved, and what we saw, and the gravity of that trip. I've never traveled out of the country, um, so I've never gone to like Tangiers or Paris or Japan or anything like that, um, but I've traveled a lot. I was in a rock and roll band that played a lot of the Southeast and Midwest. We played all over the place. Uh, with Wrestling with Ghosts, we've been all over the Eastern Seaboard. Um, as a wrestler, I've wrestled in seven or eight different, uh, five, six different states. Um, and then just taking little excursions because we love to travel, we love to eat uh, different places, but never taking on anything that was two weeks. But, uh, you know, even the first obstacle was renting a car. It was very expensive. I was quoted up to $4,000 to rent a car for that long. We finally went through Priceline and got a deal. I think it was $890. It's a really good deal. It averaged out to be about $44 a day, and that was through National but I got that through Priceline, and uh, that was pretty economical. And we decided to live in the van. Um, it cost a few hundred dollars to get the van prepared for that. And we were doing that to not only save, I don't know, two thousand dollars on plus on uh, hotel bills, but also we Brandon Bishop, who's filming the movie, is a van life guy. He's one of those guys that lives in his van now, and it's not a economic choice. It's a choice that he shoots. He goes all over the country and shoots. So he's like, well, I have uh, an apartment somewhere. So he kind of uh, has a couple home bases across the United States, but he's traveling most of the time. So we decided to go that route. And if you decide to do something like this, that takes a little bit of work. And uh, you can contact Brandon Bishop. I'm sure he'd like to talk to you about it. Uh, my wife, Julie, contacted him with some questions. And there's a lot of videos. There's a lot of van life that gives you advice on how to set up your van. The first obstacle is making sure you get a van. Because if you've rented a car in the last, since COVID, really, um, you can't depend on what they say that you order. You know, you want to, I want a convertible Dodge Charger and they, they try to put you in a Hyundai Elantra, you know, or whatever. So the first obstacle and the first thing we won was we actually got a really big Chrysler Pacifica, uh, which is very similar to the Dodge Caravans, the Dodge Grand Caravans that we drive around in. And they have the stow and go, which that's the thing we put the seats all the way down. So my wife's build was put an inflatable uh, mattress over cardboard boxes, over uh, like a table and a bunch of storage plastic bins and that was going to kind of be where we slept. Um, we had a five gallon uh, jug of water with one of those pumps. Uh, you put a pump on one of those, you know, those big blue things, and then this pump thing gets on top of it and it shoots water out. And that was good for brushing teeth or if you need water, we had a cooler. 
and it was pretty cramped. I mean, it worked okay, and it got kind of sloppy at the end. And, you, and van life is strange because it's something that you constantly have to uh, work at. Like you can't go through a day without just you know without working on existing. And so van life and this trip was okay. We're shooting a movie. That's stressful. Number one, uh, we had to be in certain cities by certain times because we had actors all across the country. Um, but there's also getting point A to point B, uh, having a budget. Uh, figuring out how to eat, what you're going to eat. But also, I mean, I had a medical issue. I had uh, brand new shoes because I wanted to wear pretty little shoes. I had vans that had flowers on them, and I thought they looked really cool. I'll show them. Oops. So these bastards here, I thought looked really cool. They were cool. They still smell new. However, they destroyed my feet. They ripped my feet apart. I had blisters. I had a blood blister and three... Uh, two blisters and a couple of contusions. It was nuts. And so um, I had to take care of my feet. You know, I had to bandage them because and, and, there was a lot of walking. And so that added an element of uh, time suckage and also it was a little dangerous. You can't, we were out on the road. We weren't in our hometown. I wasn't near my doctor. Um, plus, um, you know, brushing your teeth, finding a place to take a crap, sleeping, finding a place to sleep, finding a safe place to sleep, um, protecting yourself, being able to cool yourself. Um, Brandon lent us, uh, lent us some uh, machines called Jackeries, which are kind of like uh, little generators that you can use through the night. When you drive, you charge your Jackery up, and at night, you can plug fans in and blow fans uh, ends to keep you cool. So the problem with me and Julie was we were sharing one bed, and you didn't want to get too hot. And it was summertime, and some of the places were cool, and some of the places were pretty rough. And one of the Jackeries went out, and you know, I was like, how oh, are we going to keep cool all night? So... I didn't do too great with the heat. I, I suffered a little bit, you know. I was bringing the team down. Julie and Brandon were, were doing much better. I guess I was the prima donna actor in this damn thing. But, um, so the trip started out normal. Uh, Julie got pulled over for not having the lights on, which I thought that was funny. We, we ended up getting pulled over three times. Brandon, who drives like an asshole, uh, did not get pulled over any times, which I don't think that was fair. We only got one ticket, and that was Julie, which is crazy. She was going 97 in Arizona or somewhere. There's a funny story about that. So, but it started off, Pretty well. We got pulled over in Kentucky, but uh, we made it to Chicago, ran into a traffic jam, a little one, in Chicago, and um, I won't go through the whole trip to bore you, but I will talk about Route 66. Um, I learned a lot. Uh, there's, I have a top 10 things that surprised me about Route 66, and I'll run those down. Um, there was a lot of ignorance that was removed from my soul, and it took a while to process everything we saw. I know that sounds stupid. Uh, yeah, you had to kind of decompress a little bit from everything you, you took in because nothing is really like you think it's going to be. Um, and I kept having my mind blown. And I, I'm at the age where that probably does bad things to your actual brain. Um, but I'm going to run down the, the top 10 things that surprised me about Route 66. I'm going to skip number one right now because it's kind of not nice. But I will, uh, I'll go back to that. But number two, and this is the thing that really blew my mind, is Route 66 is no longer a continuous road. I watched An Idiot Abroad, and uh, they, one of the top, I don't know, I think it was the season where Carl Pilkington, this was Stephen Merchant, Ricky Gervais' show, where they made Ricky, or they made uh, Carl Pilkington do random uh, adventures that he didn't want to do. And um, they even had him go on Route 66. And I was like, okay, cool, Route 66. Cars talks about Route 66, that cartoon movie about the cars. Everybody knows that. But there's a truth in that movie. If you remember, Radiator Springs was a... Um, a city that was kind of abandoned because the interstate system came in. And um, you don't really realize how true that was. I mean, I guess everybody kind of, oh, it's true. But Route 66 is no longer a continuous road. So you can't get in your car in Chicago and you can't drive Route 66 all the way to uh, Los Angeles. There's just, there's parts of the road that's no longer there. It's hard to tell. Uh, this is number three. Uh, Route 66 is a difficult journey. Uh, it's hard to tell where Route 66 starts and stops. There's not a lot of information online that is congruent with, okay, so if you're going to start in Chicago, drive this road, drive this road, and there's nothing like that. You have to plot. There's an app you can get where you basically try to see the points of interest, and the points of interest kind of sometimes guides you to the cities that were on Route 66 or the towns and also to the things that were on Route 66 back then. A lot of things are propped up. Um, they're on the road called Route 66, but... They popped up years later, and they're just trying to cash in on that nostalgia that weren't really there. And I'll, I'll, I'll skip down to... So anyway, if you're going to do a Route 66, really, Interstate 40 from Oklahoma to Los Angeles, that's pretty... Route, Interstate 40 pretty much is Route 66. Now, 
there are parts that run, it seems like Missouri Route 66 runs a lot through there. So you can kind of do a Route 66 through a lot of Missouri. Same thing, I think, with Oklahoma to a degree and, um, and parts of Texas. Um, it's strange. Route 66 will go 17 miles and then it'll disappear. And then you got to get back on the interstate. And sometimes there's signs that say, hey, Route 66 is here. But yeah, there's no one continuous road. And to travel what would be considered the most or uh, what, what would be considered traveling Route 66 technically would be really difficult to figure out. It would be... I'd say it would be oppressive. I don't know if I'd want to do it. Like, I thought about going back out by myself or with somebody and not have the movie element just try to follow. But there's times where Route 66 turns up weird uh, topographies and it doesn't look like a safe road. We were on dirt sometimes. Uh, I'm not talking about gravel. I'm talking about sand. We were driving on sand parts of this trip. So, and sometimes away from where we were going. So we'd go straight up and then it would come back straight down. And you're like, this was a terrible road. Who, who made this? Uh, then I'll, I'll jump back to number one. The thing that surprised me most is Albuquerque really is a shithole. I mean, you watch Breaking Bad, you watch um, Better Call Saul, <clears throat> and you wonder why they did a meth show there. We were trying to find one of the points of interest, which was a fake muffler man, which muffler men are these giant guys that were holding mufflers. And then, um, I guess it was for some, so I can't remember the name of the, of the muffler company, but it was a thing, it was an advertisement. These, they're like two and a half, three stories tall. They're holding a muffler. Uh, but nowadays, people have removed the muffler, and they would put things like a rocket or, um, I don't know, giant dildo. I don't know. I can't remember right now. It's late. But they would, they would take the muffler out, and they would give them like an axe or something like that. So those litter Route 66. Those are kind of like little points of interest, too. And there's several of those on the highway. Um, but in Albuquerque, at like 7 in the morning, before 7 in the morning, we were trying to find a fake muffler man. It wasn't really even a muffler man. And it was downtown Albuquerque. And I swear, there was 10, 15 zombie men walking around in circles dancing kind of like the peanuts gang uh one guy was ripping his shirt off and screaming i mean this was before seven in the morning <laughs> and so albuquerque really is pretty rough i mean i went to chicago to la and I, my family's from baltimore my wife's family's from memphis and atlanta and i gotta say albuquerque's kind of gross the other thing i would say on this trip what we found out is la is pretty sad um, I've heard about that. You know, a lot of conservative people hate L.A. and, oh, Hollywood, and blah, blah, blah. But L.A. is a trip. I mean, L.A. is especially Hollywood, and we spent a lot of time in West Hollywood uh, shooting the movie and also kind of doing some sightseeing stuff. We were there at the uh, the premiere of the Teenage Kraken, which, you know, it's kind of interesting. But the thing that is really sad about L.A. is just the dichotomy of what's happening. You have people who are mega, mega, mega rich, and you have homes that are $84 million and stuff like that. And the homeless population is just out of control. Nobody seems to be helping these folks. Uh, nobody seems to be wanting to help these folks. They're everywhere. It's almost like an infestation of, of homeless people who aren't getting help. You know, I got, we went to Santa Monica Pier, went out on the beach and it was almost closing time for the Santa Monica Park because they closed the beach because I guess there's so many homeless people that, you know, they want to get everybody out of there and they got to clean the beach too, by the way, every day. I saw that. Um, but we went out and my, like I said, my feet were wounded. So I wanted to get some exfoliation from the ocean on my feet before they closed and kicked us out. So I'm standing out there looking at the, the sun and Brandon and Julia with me. And this homeless person's dog, a little tiny dog, but still the dog just runs up and bites me on the, on the calf. And again, I got injured for that. Um, yeah, it's just, it was rough. I mean, it's just, LA is sad. LA is fun. There's a lot of neat stuff to see there. But, you know, one of the worst meals of the trip was in LA and it was supposed to be a renowned place. And it's just a lot of fake clits, a lot of fake glam, a lot of wealth a lot of sadness and uh, Brandon who felt responsible for our caravan he, he felt awful tonight because he said he didn't know anything about LA and we basically had to park on the street he actually called the police where can we park we can't park at Santa Monica Pier um, so we basically had to find a, a, a residential area with a bunch of apartments and just park on the street and uh, nothing happened and everything was fine um, but uh, still it was just it's sad They're, they have to figure out LA and California and fix what's going on out there uh, number five, one of the top ten things that surprised me is uh, I was confused and blown away by almost every western state. Um, I kept expecting things to look a certain way, and they weren't. Oklahoma and Texas looked exactly like I thought they would, uh, the parts that I went through anyway. We actually ran into one of these big storms. If you've ever been out there, I mean, the storm looks like it's the universe about to explode or the solar system. I mean, it's just clouds, you know, and you're just like, oh, my God, this is huge. You know, I've always been around big cities, so buildings block the sky. I've been down south. Mountains block the sky. So, like, when you're out there and there's just nothing, and you're just looking up and these clouds and these storms are gigantic, and they start to envelop everything around you, we saw some uh, things look like little udders coming out of the clouds, look like they could have been twister clouds forming. And uh, 
yeah, I uh, totally um, was like, oh, wow, this is awesome. But also like, gee, they, well, this could be, you know, you never know. This could be the end of everything here. But um, everything else out west looked uh, different. Uh, New Mexico was green. It just looked like there were these little villages. I don't even know if you call them villages. They were kind of like little, I don't know, like three or four buildings, an abandoned church, an abandoned store or something that shoots right off the road and they're just nothing that nobody lives there there's signs for this place but it looks like a ghost town it's what it is they were, they were littered on that northeast part of new mexico that we went up because we deviated off the, the route to go to vegas because uh, he wanted to put las vegas in the um, in the movie and so we were going up through um we were coming to new mexico and we were going up uh, to the southeastern part of uh, colorado but green and all these crazy uh little towns i really wish we spent some time exploring but you're kind of under the gun but these little tiny ghost towns that were just shit and they're all dilapidated and you're like what what happened here why is everybody gone and there's just no population i mean i'm an east coast guy and there's just out west there's just just expanses of no human beings absolute isolation uh, and so utah looked unreal too i mean it you think of Mormons and Brigham Young and BYU football and Salt Lake, uh, you know, uh, the jazz out there, you know, Salt Lake City Jazz. and uh, It's just wild. And Utah is just wild. We went, uh, I was doing 110 and got pulled over by a cowboy cop who ended up being cool, but he was not happy with me in the beginning, especially my East Coast jive talk. He didn't like being called man, even though I was polite to him. But he let me go with a warning. That was the same time we got pulled over. But uh, good God, just nothing. There's nothing out there. And it's beautiful. It's kind of deserty too. Um, number six on my list is much of Colorado is desert. I never knew that. You know, you, you look at all the beer commercials like uh, Coors Light. You look at, you know, you hear about the Rocky Mountains. You watch South Park and it's all mountains. And, you know, Denver, oh, it's a mile high. I just expected the entire state to be uh, like, a, like the Appalachians, but just much bigger. And, um, but it's a desert state. And in Colorado City, as beautiful as it is, it's a desert town. It blows my mind. If you ever look at a map with topography on it, the eastern part is desert, and the middle part is the mountains, and then it gets back in the desert again. Never knew that. And most of the major cities are right in the road. There's like Pueblo, Colorado City, Denver. And then you go over, and there's like Grand Junction. What's the other one? Boulder? Boulder's up in there. So when you're going over, this is the other thing, too. This is another thing about Colorado that surprise, surprises us. Going up into the mountains. We leave in Denver, right? We left uh, Casa Bonita from South Park. We're going into the mountains. Brandon calls us. Hey, by the way, make sure you hydrate because you can get altitude sickness. Well, right then, we got altitude sickness. Julie went very dehydrated, and I had surgery on my eye, and my left eyeball was just basically a green and purple and yellow blob of veins I couldn't see. And this eye was starting to freak out, and I didn't feel good. And we were experiencing some form of altitude sickness. So if you ever drive through Colorado and stuff like that, take that seriously. Had a lot of hydration, and our pump was cramped. The bed kind of slid, and we couldn't get to the water, so we had to get off of the place and spend about an hour wasting time, which ended up being the best part of the trip. Um, but yeah, we, we almost got really bad physical health there. Uh, the best part of the trip, this is an aside from the top 10, is, is uh, the sun was kind of setting in the movie making world, they call that the golden hour. The Irish call it the gloaming. And uh, we were able to see a lot of the Goblin National Park. There were not a lot of monsters running around that we saw, um, but there were several overlooks, scenic overlooks. And we stopped at three in a row. One was called Ghost Rock, but before that there was one that was a San Rafael Reef. And I climbed something and just said, climb this hill. I wanted to climb. There was like a little trail. I had no idea. So I followed this trail. with like an ATV, deep, AVT pad, ATV pad. Climb this hill, and it goes nowhere. There's nothing. I thought it was going to like a radio tower or, or something with water. You know, I thought it was like a national park thing, but there was nothing. At the top of the hill, it just drops off. And he got to see. Oh, my God. And there was graffiti down there because it's American. and everybody sucks. But there was some graffiti, but man, most of us, oh my God, when I was coming back down, I saw a tractor trailer catch fire. We called 911. We went up to Ghost Rock, where Butch Cassidy and a bunch of other outlaws used to hide up there. And uh, just beautiful. My favorite part of the trip is just unbelievable. The beauty up there, the fun I had climbing the hill. You saw, if you saw on Facebook, I took my shirt off and had it. And I was like, I felt like a wild man in the desert. So fun, beautiful. And we kept driving through the night. Number seven um, on this list of top 10 things that surprised me is Joliet's Route 66 points of interest are much different than the West. Um, it's a very different trip. Uh, I found that very odd. A lot of the people, there's a lot of like shops and museums and things like that in Illinois and kind of in Missouri too. Um, 
where all of the uh, points of interest are real polished, clean. A lot of it is fake retro, or they've revamped it and made it real clean. Like there's a lot of neon, and everything looks like, hey, Richie Valens and Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper and all that stuff, and Chuck Berry. A lot of Elvis stuff, you know, a lot of neon, and Route 66 gets your kicks, and um, Cadillacs, this, that, and the other. And so that's real polished and clean. Del Rey's, which is a restaurant that's famous, Del Rey's Chicken Basket there in um, um, Willowbrook, Illinois, I think. Uh, they, you know, it looks like it's the 50s. You know, it's, it's, it leans into that. And a lot of that's fun. And there's a lot of stuff around Joliet and Chicago and heading towards Missouri. If you go west, most of the points of interest out there are abandoned or just remote. Uh, and a lot of them are graffitied. A lot of them are run down. It's a different universe. You know, Route 66 in my brain is always the desert part anyway. Um, but, yeah, man, the Twin Arrows is run down and graffitied to hell. And there's a lot of, like, abandoned gas stations and stuff that are graffitied up. And, um, you know... It's just a different, it's different. Um, not worse out there, but just different. Um, kind of strange to think about. Um, also out west, this is fun. Uh, at one point after we saw Goblin Park, I think I was in Nevada at this point, or we were getting close to Nevada, and we were heading towards St. George. Brandon was way ahead of us because we got pulled over, because we had al altitude sickness, and because we started pulling over at these overlooks. Uh, I decided, well, I wanted to see what this, the sky would look like without light pollution. It's very tough on the East Coast and in the Mid-South because there's lights and highways and cars everywhere to kind of get away from light pollution and look up at the stars. I want to see the Milky Way and stuff. So I thought, okay, here's a road. Lots of roads out there have no service. They're just roads that lead to other nowhere spots. And so there's no gas, food, or lodging, basically is what that means. So um, I decided I'm going to pull off this road here. Pull off the road and immediately it turns into dirt, white dirt. And I slammed on the brakes and I almost went into a effing field with the apparatus of the, you know, the water giant, you know, those big things the farmers have, and, you know, it's like these big robot things that shoot, I almost hit one of those things right off the interstate. I was like, there's, there's not even a road here, so watch out if you're in the desert at night and you pull off the interstate for one reason or another, you could be driving into a field, just like licking split. Um, the California, this is number nine on my list, uh, the desert towns are like alien worlds. There's a thing in, there's a place in California where there is a giant field of solar panels. This is coming out of Las Vegas into L.A. And in the middle, there is this giant, I don't even know what you'd call it, like an arm, holding a mirror or a light that is shining for hundreds of miles. And if you stare at it, you'll burn your retinas out. But it's this giant thing in the desert. And you're like, this looks like an alien universe. I've never seen that before anywhere. <laughs> I've never heard anybody ever talk about it. And, you know, places like Needles and stuff like that, man, it is so weird there. Um... I don't know why anybody would live there. I, I have a hard time. There's like, there's a restaurant called Peggy Sue's um, 50s Diner or Route 66 Diner in Dinosaur Park. And there's like a military base there. But like, why would anybody live? You know, we, we drove off, I guess it's Baker. We drove off a town called Baker, California. It's just pure desert. And in Baker, they had like an alien uh, jerky tank that looked like a space tank. Alien stuff all inside. Terrible jerky from what I heard. But it's a good um, it's a good respite. But right across the streets, like the world's largest thermometer, and a kid's just in there. It's like an NPC. There's no way a guy lives in this town and works at the world's largest thermometer, which that was pretty cool actually. But he's just in there, hanging out. Hey, how you doing, folks? With the doors wide open at 90 degree heat, and the air conditioner running. Very strange. Desert people. So yeah, the desert town. It just looks like a different world, man. When you're from the eastern part of the United States, it's just crazy. And number ten, there's a road called Zizix Road. I don't even know how you pronounce it, but it's Z Z Y Z X. And that's a point of interest, too. Um, but, yeah, somebody got lazy with that one. Um, the trip was amazing. I mean, we went from Knoxville to Lexington to Indianapolis. Oh, excuse me, to Louisville to Indianapolis to Chicago. Uh, and then all the way down to St. Louis, which I've never been to St. Louis before. I saw the Arch. Um, went down to Amarillo. Um, Oklahoma City was in there. You know, we shot over to New Mexico. Shot up to Colorado Springs, Pueblo, Denver, uh, Grand Junction, St. George. Uh, Baker, California, Las Vegas, uh, Los Angeles, Flagstaff, um, doo -doo -doo, shooting across. You miss uh, Santa Fe and Phoenix, so you don't hit those kind of cities. Um, Tucumcari, and then we on the way back, we skipped going up Route 66, and we shot into like past Little Rock, uh, Memphis, and Nashville, too. So that was a hell of a, hell of a jaunt. Um, saw a lot of the United States. I probably forgot a major city. The nicest city, I would say that we ran into was probably Colorado Springs. That looks like 
it, it was kind of like a touristy place, uh, but there was not a lot of, uh, the downtown was nice. There was, it just seemed like a good artsy place. It's kind of in the sweet spot of not being too liberal and not being too conservative. It's kind of an artsy place, but they got their shit together kind of thing. It was, it was a nice place. Good city. Uh, worst city was probably Albuquerque. Um, yeah, crazy trip. Um, if you have any questions, you can always put them in the comments, and I'll respond to this later of advice or websites or what you should do. Um, you know, I don't know how much money we spent on gas, but it was, it was well over $1,000 in gas right now. And gas in uh, Los Angeles was at some places $6, but we were pretty good. We got gas in the desert. We got gas in Vegas. And then we were able to escape and get more gas in like Barstow, California, and evade the whole getting gas in Las Vegas part. But that was the most expensive. Uh, Los Angeles was... I think I got some gas for like 519 out there. Well, this gas is probably here. You know, there's some gas here that's 286. So, and there's gas is almost five bucks in Chicago. So, if you do the trip, think about that. Do a quick rundown of my favorite meals of the trip. So, if you guys see this that run these restaurants, because we ate a lot, uh, send me some money or send me some steaks or something in the mail. Number ten, Al's Beef. We shot a scene there. That's in Chicago near Wrigleyville. Um, Portillo's, uh, Mickey's. Great Italian beefs, but Al's beef is, is really solid too. Jardinera, all the good stuff. They put the hot peppers on there. Dip the sandwich in the, in the juice. You take the Italian stance. There's a picture of a guy doing the Italian stance there at the bench. You sit there with your butt out, and you let the sandwich drip. Very good. There was a place called Dell's with a big giant cow on it, I think, in Tucumcari, New, New Mexico. Um, didn't expect anything. Uh, Tucumcari was kind of sad in a way. A lot of, um, I don't know, native people. and it, God, it's just one of those, those, there's a lot of Western cities that were sad. Um, but Dale's was like a steakhouse meets Mexican restaurant. And I feel like we have excellent Mexican restaurants in Sevier County with Sevierville and Pigeon Forge are, and we do. And I've been disappointed where I live now with the lack of Mexican food, but this was a good restaurant. They'd served up chili rellenos in a very particular strange way where they fried, um, the, 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 the breading around the pepper to the point to where it was almost crunchy. And it was almost like a candy bar type element where it was hard, crunchy on the outside and gooey on the inside. It was really good. Dale's in Tucumcari. Number eight was the Whole Hog Cafe in Springfield. You hear a lot about barbecue in Missouri and Tennessee and North Carolina and Texas. Uh, this was a Missouri uh, stab, and it was very good. It was, um, we got, um, I got ribs. Ribs were very good, a lot of good sauces. So, yeah, the Whole Hog Cafe, big thumbs up. Number seven was a huge surprise, and there was these, we got on Route 66, which was a bypass to 40, and it led absolutely nowhere. You could not go south or east, but it went north. And that's when I was talking about What's Route 66 doing? It's going completely straight up into a bunch of weird cities. And when you're driving around, you're just like, why does anybody live here? If you saw my TikTok video, this was the area where um, there was a sleeping Abraham Lincoln in the mountains. It really looks like Abraham, a short, compressed Abraham Lincoln with a boner. But we won't talk about that. But the people there think that looks like Abraham Lincoln laying down on his back. It was the mountain range. And it's also part of the movie where there's an alien abduction, spoiler alert. And also, uh, if you see me throwing coconuts at Brandon Bishop, that was the best part of the trip because that was fun. I kept hitting him. I was going in a car 30 miles an hour throwing coconuts at him. <laughs> they, were, they were zinging out of the car and pegging him and he was trying to stay still. That was high comedy for me. But um, there's a place in um, Topic, Topic, something like that, Arizona. Blondie's on 66. Brandon's a little angry guy. So we went in there blaring country music and they had a trump cut out and he was like, oh my God, where have we gone? I was like, just chill out, man. Just chill. And they had a crazy menu, and it was one of those red flags restaurants where it was like, you have too many things on the menu, and it's like, this place is going to be terrible. I got this, I can't remember, it was a turkey sandwich with some sort of poblano pepper on it and, and, and perfect cheese. It was delicious, and everybody had a good meal. Brandon was very surprised, and he flipped the Trump uh, standee out, and they started having a celebration, and they gave him a free shot. And he was like, what? And he's like, well, we just want to see what, how people are going to react to that Trump cutout, and you won. And uh, his mind was blown at that point. He was like... My God, this this whole place. So you can't judge a book by its cover. And if you like Trump, that's fine. That's him. I didn't flip him off. I'm just saying uh, he he became less grumpy. Number five was awesome. Uh, it's a C Senor taco truck in Clayton, New Mexico, and it's a taco truck that Brandon used to get when he used to live in uh, when he used to live in Colorado and he would wrestle in Texas. He would always stop at this New Mexico taco stand, and I didn't get much because I was still full from a previous meal. But what I got was delicious. And it was very similar to El Primo's in Sevierville and also the Shell Station on Wears Valley Road and Pigeon Forge at Alberto Runs out of the gas station. Very similar to Tacos. Delicious. Number four, we filmed a movie scene, a pretty important movie scene at a place called Bartoli's in Chicago. And they made us a deep dish pizza. 
and it was kind of disgusting because the Tomaselli brothers that were there without shirts on, and they were wearing their uh, aprons, and everybody kept touching the pizza. And even though, and I got hit in the eyeball, the bad eyeball, I just had surgery on with the pizza, and that hurt. And even though there was the talk of puke, because that's part of the, 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 the movie, with everything going wrong, it was very hot. There were kids there that didn't want to be there. We were there for a while because we're shooting. With all that talk, Bartoli's still, that deep dish pizza was very, very good. It may be one of the best I've ever had, deep dish pizzas. Um, so, yeah, check that out. Bartoli's, I think it's on Addison in Chicago near Wrigleyville. Number three is no surprise. It's way up there. It probably would be higher if um, I didn't have to eat Rocky Mountain oysters here. But the Big Texan in Amarillo, Texas is one of those, you eat, 70, you eat the 72 ounce steak and all the accoutrements like the shrimp cocktail and stuff. Uh, you get it for free. Um, if not, it's 72 bucks for this huge thing. I didn't do that because my stomach has shrunk lately because I've been trying to lose weight with intermittent fasting. But I had a 48 ounce porterhouse, I think. Um, delicious. It was just unbelievable, man. Um, cut of meat was delicious. And I had uh, salad too. I'm not a fan of Rocky Mountain oysters, but they kind of taste like clams, especially if they come out with the shrimp sauce. Number two, I just had a piece of meat and a piece of bread. They would, for the movie, Brandon wanted me to eat at Del Rey's Chicken Basket um, outside of Joliet. I think it's called Willowbrook, Illinois, and it's located right on 66. But that being said, it's hard to get to it because Route 66 is way off the beaten path at that point. But this thing's still alive and well. It's the best piece of fried chicken I've ever had in my life. Uh, it was a piece of it was a breast. It was on top of this white piece of bread. I picked it up. It, the the you know how you get sometimes fried chicken can be like four inches thick of the breading or whatever, and you eat the meat and it's dry. This was just a thin layer of skin or whatever that is, the brown gimmick. You eat it, it just fell apart. And then the it was messy and oily, but yet the, the bread underneath kind of caught it all and it made the bread so good, dude. And number one may be disappointing to people on the list because you'll never experience it, but Brandon Bishop is an excellent cook and he made fajitas on a flat grill in Colorado Springs when we stayed the night there. It was the guy at Kil Kilroy's workshop in Colorado Springs let us use his grill. And it was amazing what he made. Chicken, steak, all the vegetables, shit tons of avocado. The tortillas were perfectly grilled. I wish I could eat that every day of my life. Brandon is a fucking Mac when it comes to cooking. So those are my two lists. And I feel like I've purged a lot. Uh, but there's still, I could talk for probably another 45 minutes about this trip and feel at that point maybe like I've completed uh, my thoughts. Uh, un incredible beauty, um, incredible, incredible poverty a lot of dichotomy um, in the country, um, but I'm glad I'm home. Um, but Route 66 is checked off the bucket list, and it's something if you had about, probably cost us about 3000 to maybe 3500 to do that trip. I don't know, somewhere around there. I just quit counting after a while. It's an expensive trip, uh, but if you do it the right way, it's not that expensive for a two-week vacation these days. Just go check it out, man. It's, it's an amazing, and be careful, and, and make sure you got a vehicle. Like, I got this Pacifica, 500 miles, brand new Pacifica for us. It was a godsend and uh, brought it back, I think it was 6,400 miles. We put 5,900, almost 5,900 miles on it. And the little man was like, whoa. <laughs> and I would like to actually do more Route 66 next time. It just doesn't become feasible. I mean, going 40 miles an hour on parts of a road that are kind of Route 66, and you can go 80 and 90 on 40, sometimes you just gotta, you know, it's like, I, I can't spend a month out here. So you have to kind of pick your battles and see what you want to see. But um, yeah, it's wild, you know, and there's personal things too, like um, I saw not one, but two computer space machines. Um, it's the first video game ever, that Atari, and Atari made them, and they're really cool looking. They're kind of like these fiberglass, bowling ball flecked kind of machines. Neither one of them worked, but one was in Atlanta, Illinois, and the other one was in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Pinball Museum. And I got to see not only one, but two, and they're very rare, and they're the first video games ever. And they don't look like any other video games, they look really, really cool, retro futuristic. So there were things like that that happened. I played the Kiss Pinball Machine, the, the newer one, which was very good. Um, so, and then I got uh, I got reengaged to my wife, and we get married in uh, Myrtle Beach down with Candy Thompson at some point. And then we went to the Stratosphere and uh, ate and had sex and did all that kind of great stuff. Dude, I've been rambling. Um, it's a hell of a trip, Route 66, and going out west. Do it. If you have any questions, put them down there, and I'll answer, you know, whatever. If you have anything, hey, what did you think about this? Or did you see this? Because we saw a thousand things um, that I didn't even mention. So, be good, treat yourself right, go on a vacation, and this is a hell of a vacation option. Um, and for two weeks, you know, $3,500 for two people, maybe four grand, maybe it was like 32, I don't know, it was somewhere in there. It's not bad, not a bad, not a bad thing. If you save up for it for a couple of years, you'll be, you'll be it's a week, I'm still catching my breath off this trip. Also, the movies Camp Smokey, Big and Funky Productions, uh, we're releasing that here very, very soon. I'm editing it now, and this Vinny's Fantastic Rock and Roll Adventure will be on Sci TV soon. After that, it will be released on DVD and Blu-ray. 
and uh, then it will be on all the streamers after a few months on a side TV. You guys be good. I love you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.